Eight. Good morning. So <laughs> it's <laughs> it's a Tuesday Tuesday evening for us. Wednesday morning for you guys. So obviously tonight is Bible study. Oh, yeah. I just want to remind you guys: seven o'clock California time. Also. Sunday services are now going to be at 9 o'clock. I know we said it yesterday. We're saying it again. We will have our services outdoor in the in the uh, back parking lot, which, thank God, a few months ago, you guys know that we didn't even have a gate. Yeah. But now we have a gate, which is going to be perfect because now we're going to have service outside. As you know, the state of California, the governor uh, has closed down churches, gyms, and a uh, Small businesses, restaurants, a whole lot of things. Uh, oh, barbershops, nail yeah. salons. But we, anything having to do with indoor. Anything with indoor. Much, yeah. Anything that with indoor. Um, the church service outside cannot be stopped. It is not being stopped. Um, we had a meeting with Grace International. Over 200 pastors were, were in on this Zoom call earlier and um, with a couple lawyers and an insurance agent. And basically, uh, nobody is is saying we can't have service outside. And even if anyone did, it's against the Constitution. In the same Constitution that allows people to protest, to peacefully protest, is the same Constitution that says it's a separation of church and state. So, um, yeah, so we are going to have service at 9 o'clock. That's why we're knocking it back an hour, because that way we can have an hour because it starts to get warm. Mm -hmm. You know, and if we start at nine, there's a little bit more shade and it's cooler. Yeah. So that way we're done by roughly 1030 or so. Yeah. yeah. So nine o'clock service Sunday and Wednesday, seven o'clock, still same time Wednesday, Wednesday, sorry, Wednesday um, at night. Mm -hmm. And um, and then we just had a Zoom meeting with our leadership at the church. So um, everything's yeah. going good, guys. Everybody's on board. Everybody's ready. Um we're ready to do this together, guys. You know, um, I'm happy that that everybody's just ready to go, and they're just like, you know, let's do this. Let's, you know, what do we need to do? Let's let's get it done. Um, and we just we're just we just want to praise and worship the Lord, you know, and yeah. that's what we want to do. Yeah, Amen. but it it was nice. I'll be honest with you. Um, we have felt disconnected from other pastors somewhat. You know, because through the pandemic, as you know, we haven't had our quarterlies with Grace International. Yeah. We look forward to our yearly annual convention. Yeah, and October. there's no word about that. It's probably not going to happen. But to be on a Zoom call with over 200 pastors and leaders, yeah. um, it was nice to just know that we're not alone in this. And yeah. to hear lawyers say, listen, you do what you got to do, what God is calling you to do. And we got your back. Yeah. You know, so. That feels nice. You know, some of the, some of the awesome, I, I love some of the words that, that um, one of the word that they said today is like encouraged to have courage. I love that, you know, and, and that was, that was really, really cool because we have to encourage to have courage, you know, and to stay encouraged. Yeah. And, and I think that's so important because that, that just stood out to me when they, when they said that. And I was mm -hmm. like, you know, that's, that's pretty awesome because without encouraging others, it takes courage to encourage others to begin with. And, and you have to encourage others to have courage to stay encouraged, you know? Yeah. And it just made me like, wow, you know, that's, it's so simple and and yet it seems so easy, but it's not, you guys. Yeah. It's really not that easy to constantly stay encouraged. Um, because even throughout these times, you know, there's a, apart from this whole pandemic, you gotta remember that there's still life. Life is still going on. You still have family issues, you still have issues with the children, you still have issues in the marriage, you still have financial issues. You still have issues with just people in general. But the thing is, is that you just got to stay encouraged through it all. And this whole thing that's going on, it's almost like an added thing on top of everything. And it's almost like, wow, I'm, I still have to stay encouraged through it all. Yes. 
you know, but the best way to do that is by encouraging someone else, you stay encouraged. Yeah. And you find the courage to do that. And I just loved it. It just really stood out to me. So I want to tell you guys to um, stay encouraged, to find that courage, to stay encouraged, to encourage someone else. <laughs> Did I just confuse you? Yeah. <laughs> but you guys got it. <laughs> okay, cool. So, uh, but guys, other than that, we're going to get right get right into this. Yes. Um, we're not going to take long. Like I said, we had the, it was a two-hour meeting with the 200 pastors, and then we had a Zoom meeting with our leadership. So we want to um, just dive right into this thing and um, get right to it, you know? Nice. So hopefully you guys are having a great day so far. If, if this is the first thing in the morning, I hope the coffee's good. Um, hope you're having a Cadillac. I know. So um, we're going to read out of First John. Um, First John chapter 4, we're going to go 1 through 6. Uh, John, as you know, was a disciple, uh, an apostle of Jesus. He was the youngest. He's the one that actually took care of the mother of Jesus. He was the only one that did not abandon Jesus when Jesus was being crucified. John was there. John saw it. John saw the Savior suffering. You know, so... Um, in First John, he's an older man by the time he wrote this. This is way after he wrote the Gospel of John. He's an old man by now. And um, he wrote this short letter to the church. And um, there was a lot of false teaching that was going on. This is why he felt he had to speak up. Uh, maybe he knew he didn't have much time left. He was an old man already because yeah. he was the youngest one with Jesus. But yeah. now he's an old man and he felt he had to warn the church. And he starts off by saying this. He says, beloved, because he talked to them like a grandfather. Yeah. He would call them his children. He would, you know, he, he, he the was. The wise abuelito. Yeah. The wise grandpa. He says, beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this, you know, the spirit of God, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. You are of God, little children. There it is like the grandfather mm -hmm. and have overcome them. Because he who is in you is greater than he who's in the world. They are of the world. Therefore, they speak as of the world and the world hears them. We are of God. And he who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this, we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of Air, one through six. Amen. Uh, David reads out of the New King James, and I'm reading out of the message. My dear friends, don't believe everything you hear. Carefully weigh and examine what people tell you. Not everyone who talks about God comes from God. There are a lot of lying preachers loose in the world. Here's how you test for the genuine spirit of God. Everyone who confesses openly his faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who came as an actual flesh and blood person, comes from God and belongs to God. And everyone who refuses to confess faith in Jesus has nothing in common with God. This is a spirit of antichrist that you heard was coming. Well, here it is, sooner than what, than what we thought. My dear children, you come from God and belong to God. You have already won a big victory over those false teachers. For the spirit in you is far stronger than anything the world, anything in the world, sorry. These people belong to Christ, the Christ-denying world. They talk the world's language and the world eats it up. But we come from God and belong to God. Anyone who knows God understands us and listens. The person who has nothing to do with God will, of course, not listen to us. This is another test for telling the spirit of truth from the spirit of deception. Amen. Amen. So there's six verses. We're going to break these down. That's kind of why I didn't want to talk too much in the beginning, because I, I feel it's really important to kind of just break these six verses down. So we're going to hit the first one. 
The first one, he says, beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits. Whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. And then in this translation, it says, don't believe everything you hear. Carefully weigh and examine what people tell you. See, this is why I always stress to know the context of things. Because when we know the context of something, um, it's, it's harder for somebody to tell you something false. Yeah. And when you study the word and know your Bible, it's harder for somebody to pass you some to pass something false to you. If you study a dollar bill, then it's hard for somebody to give you a monopoly you bill. You counterfeit, yeah. You know, because you know, you know what a dollar bill feels like. You know what it looks like. And if somebody gives you a monopoly money bill, you're like, well, what? What is this? You know. And, and it's the same thing. So we have to be able to test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. You know, this was relevant back then. That makes it much more relevant today. You know, is that fact, guys? That means, see, the Bible says there's false teachers. See, here's, here's what's weird about it is it, it, we live in a time and a day where everybody says, well, as long as they're preaching Jesus... As long as, well, if that's the truth, then who are the false teachers that the Bible's talking about? Yeah. The false prophets that the Bible's talking about. If the Bible states there's false prophets, then there has to be false prophets. You know, we can't just make, just because the world wants to be politically correct doesn't mean that the church is going to be. Because if it talks about false prophets, that means there are false prophets. You know, and, and what's crazy is I'm, I'm a true believer that many false prophets don't even realize they're false prophets. It's because they were taught wrong. Yeah. And they're just spewing out what was spewed into them. Yeah. You know, and, and and for whatever reason, you know, so we have to be able to test the spirits whether they are of God. So how, how do we do that? How do we test it? And he talks about it in verse two. I also think that even when, when Jesus was on the cross, he says, forgive them, Lord, for they know not what they do, because he, he knew. They don't know. You know for, they, for they don't know. The, the, the Pharisees that hated him, they did, he knew that they were just yeah. reiterating what was taught to them. Exactly. He knew that. Yeah. He knew that being up there. And he says, forgive them, Lord, for they know not what they do. And, and yet still he did not flaw, fault them for that, you mm -hmm. know? because he knew that in his heart. Yeah, and, I, and I, I'm glad you brought that up, babe, because a lot of times, just because somebody's a false prophet, does that necessarily make them your enemy? Mm -mm. See, Paul himself was persecuting Christians, yet, Paul, je, yet Jesus didn't reject him. Matter of fact, he pursued him. Yeah, yeah. He pursued him and made him probably one of the biggest impacts that we know today was the Apostle Paul, mm -hmm. you know, and he was somebody that was arresting Christians, persecuting Christians. Christians were murdered at his nod. Yet Jesus like, he ain't my enemy. He just doesn't know me yet. Yeah. You know, so we got to be careful, guy, that do we test every spirit? Yes. Do we have the, oblig are we obligated to, to know what's false and true? Yes. But do we make them our enemy? No. You know, we don't. And, and I like the way, the way you brought that up. The Lord says, forgive them. They just don't know. You know, there's no way we could, um, if, if somebody is a false prophet, you're not going to out argue him, but you can out love him. You know, and, and that's what we got to understand is that Jesus won people, you know, Jesus won people over because it was just something about the passion that he had towards the people. That even a tax collector like Matthew, who was shrewd and would steal from his own people, yet something in Jesus made Matthew say, I got to leave this life. You know, it's it's crazy because, you know, as much as the persecution and as much as all the falseness that was talked about Jesus and all of that, you know, he didn't argue back. He just he just stood in silence and he just allowed people just continued to persecute and to talk about him and to do all of that. And you know what? He just accepted it. Mm -hmm. And he just continued to just say, you know what? It's, it's okay. It's okay. You know, but he loved back anyways. Yeah. And, and he stood in silence and, and sometimes 
sometimes that's what we have to do. Sometimes we have to bite our tongues. Sometimes we have to pull away a little bit and, and be like, you know what? It's okay. That's what we have to do. Sometimes you have to take the hits and you have to do all of that and just step away a little bit and be like, it's okay. I'm willing to, I'm willing to take all of that yeah. um, to, to love someone, mm -hmm. you know, because I really truly believe that when you love someone in everything that, that you got to pray and just be like, Lord, show them, show them, show them in their heart, yeah. reveal it to them, you know, and just let God move. Let God be the one to move in their hearts. Because yeah, because sometimes when we try to fix it, we end up messing up what God was doing. Yeah, yeah. And I think that sometimes it's better just to step away. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and in the midst of all of that, um, I think the enemy, the enemy becomes more upset and more mad because there is no confrontation, because there is no, you know, mm -hmm. because there is silence and that because there is that. But the thing is, like you said, love conquers, mm -hmm. you know more love conquers everything. So I, I just, to me, I just think it's, it's such a beautiful, I think it's such a beautiful example yeah. here. Yeah. So the next verse is, is verse two, I think, right? Or No, we were not everyone who talks about God comes. There's a, um, yeah, 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 it was. It says, yeah, because it says, this is how we know the spirit of God. By this, you know, the spirit of God. Yeah, it is verse two. Mm -hmm. Every spirit, that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. Now, you might say, because in a Western world, we're like, well, nobody denies that Jesus came. But you got to understand, John was writing to Jewish people that in order for them to say that Jesus was the Messiah, they would get rejected from their family. Nobody, If they owned a business, nobody would buy from them. So they hid it. So they had to hide it. But he was like saying, this you know, this is how you know the spirit of God. He's talking to the Jewish people. This is how you know. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. Because by confessing that, you were basically going to be ostracized in that time in Israel. Yeah. Yeah. You were going to be rejected. You know, and um, so that is why that to some people... Uh, I've heard people, especially in prison, when they would bring this up, they're like, that verse doesn't make sense. Of course, Jesus came in the flesh. And I'm like, first, you got to understand the context of who John is talking to. He's talking to Jewish people. There was no way if they didn't believe in Jesus, they would never say that he was God in the flesh. Mm. They would have never said that. You know, so um, by this, you know, the spirit of God, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And verse three says, and every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. So he's, because remember, Paul, before he was named Paul, he was Saul. He didn't believe that Jesus came. So basically, John is saying, well, then you weren't of God then. Yeah. You were not of God. And that's a bold statement. Basically, John is telling all the Jews, if you don't say that Jesus is of God, then you're not of God. Yeah. You know, now here's another thing is that, a, a huge religion did come 600 years later after this. No. Yeah, 600 years later, which was this guy named Muhammad. This guy Muhammad uh, from the Middle East, Medina, I believe. He said that an angel appeared to him and told them something different. And every time this angel would appear to him, his body would shake in convulsions. Sounds like demonic possession to me, but this man, Muhammad, was illiterate. He didn't even know how to write, but somehow he wrote the the uh, the Quran. Mm -hmm. I, so I do believe he, was, he had a revelation. I do re believe an angel appeared to him, a fallen angel, mm. because he was a man that didn't know how to write. How did he write that book? Yeah. But he was told that Jesus was simply a prophet. He was told that Jesus was not God. He was told that Jesus didn't really die on the cross. So you got to understand too, is that Islam is a false teaching. They have false prophets. They don't confess that Jesus is God. God. So because of that, he says, this is how you're going to know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. 
And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist. Yeah. Here it says, and everyone who refuses to confess faith in Jesus has nothing in common with God. Wow. Yeah. So, because a lot of us, we tend to read this within the Christian circle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But John was talking about something deeper. He knew false teachings were going to come. He knew false, because a lot of people say, um, well, false Christian teachings, that has nothing to do with Islam. You're not understanding that Muhammad was very, he, un, he was conscious of the Bible. He knew the stories of the Bible. So when he twisted it and turned it into Islam, it's still a false gospel. Yeah. You know, so right here, he's just straight up saying, man, that is the spirit of the Antichrist. Anything that doesn't confess Jesus as God is the spirit of the Antichrist. So it's like people say, I wonder if this is the last days. I wonder if the Antichrist. And it's like, what are you talking about? That spirit has always been around. Yeah. I love what, what he's saying on this next verse, you know, when he says, my dear children, you come from God and belong to God. You know, you've already won a big victory over those false teachers. He's speaking to believers here. Yeah, he is. You know, he's speaking to believers He's already saying, listen, you you have the victory. You have the victory um, over those false teachers. You know, take what's yours. Conquer what's yours. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's already yours. And he's speaking to believers. Yeah. Well, that's the verse that is very famously known by Christians, the one you read. Mm -hmm. But in here, you'll recognize it. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because he who is in you is greater than he who's in the world. Yeah. You know, so John is like, listen, man, you have Christ in you. And if you have Christ in you, then you have something greater in you yeah. than this entire world. Amen. You know, but real quick at the, when the last verse of three, after it says the spirit of the Antichrist, it says, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. Sooner than what we thought, yeah. Yeah. So it's not about, some people ask me, have asked me before, like, do you think the Antichrist is here in the earth? I know what they're asking, you know, but at the same time, I'm like, you do know the spirit of the Antichrist has always been around, hmm. you know, uh, dictators and kings and false teachers and prophets, that same spirit. It reminds me of that movie. Um, have you ever seen that movie Fallen with Denzel? Yeah. When that spirit keeps traveling? Yeah, it travels. Yeah, I like to use that as an example because it's basically the same thing. The spirit of the Antichrist, you know, I believe in multiple people, anything that's against Christ is an Antichrist. So we think of the Antichrist as this big dictator and this and that. It could be the guy in your block that is refusing Christ and attacking the church. That person has a spirit of the Antichrist. Yeah. When a mob of people are, are going and standing in front of a church in New York City trying to prevent people from going and worship, spirit that is the spirit of the spirit Antichrist. Of the Antichrist. Yeah. So <laughs> that spirit that's bringing division in that church, you know, and causing all havoc, that's the spirit of the Antichrist. Exactly. Yeah. But he says, little children, you overcome it. You have already, if you have Christ in you, you have already won the victory. Isn't that what it says in there? It says you've already won a big victory over those false teachers, for the spirit in you is far stronger than anything in the world. Amen. These people belong to the Christ-denying world. Yeah. It says they are of the world. They are of the world, therefore they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. So you're going to be hated by the world no matter what. You know, that's why so many, so many, like this whole thing that's going on right now with the pandemic and especially in California where churches are closed basically once again. And I, it's, it's a fine line. It's like this perfect balancing act of pastors. We want to care for the people at the same time. Sometimes we lean low toward the, where we want to be people pleasers. I'm not here to please people that are non-believers. You know, because they're going to hate you no matter what, because they hated Jesus. Jesus says, if they hated you, don't worry. They hated me first. Amen. You know, and, and it's like it comes down to we are not here to be loved by everybody. We are here to preach the gospel. We're here to stand for Christ. We are here to preach the truth. 
It doesn't mean we're going to be popular. Jeremiah wasn't popular. Ezekiel wasn't popular. Daniel wasn't popular. Peter wasn't popular. Paul wasn't popular. John wasn't popular. Jesus wasn't popular. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, we want to be people pleasers, and we want to be popular, and we want our city to like us. We want to win a key to the city, and this and that. What is that? That is not what the gospel says to do. Yeah. You know, be with the in crowd. Yeah, it says they're of the world, and they speak of the world, and the world hears them. How does it say it in there? Uh, they talk the world's language. These people belong to the Christ and I world. They talk the world's language, and the world eats it up but we come from God and belong to God. Yeah. So the world hears them, guys. So no matter what, no matter what, we will never win on this world because on the world level, the world only hears the world. Yeah. You know, and, and it's like a lot of times people want to come into the church and bring worldly situations and they ain't trying to hear you if you're trying to talk, talk anything else. You know, and, and um, so it says here in verse six, we are of God. See, we're not. If you are a believer in Christ and believe in him with all your heart, confess um, in, in faith in him. He says, then it says we are of God. We're not of the world. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. Amen. You know, that's why a lot of times, you know, when we hear somebody speak, whether on TV or whatever, we can tell because the spirit bears witness. Yeah, amen. You know, um, we can just tell. You know, I don't know how many times that we go and whether it's a garage sale or Walmart or whatever, we strike up a conversation and, and they're believers yeah. because the spirit bears witness. This amen. is the way they speak, the way they talk. You just know it says we are of God. He who knows God hears us. And who he who is not of God does not hear us. They ain't trying to hear it. They don't understand. They can't comprehend. You know, it says, by this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. There's two spirits here. One is of truth, and we know Jesus is that spirit because he says, I am the truth. Mm -hmm. So there's not no, like, there's not no spirit of truth in heaven. It's not like here's Jesus, and here comes a floating spirit of truth. It's talking about Jesus. Amen. That spirit of truth has a name, and his name is Jesus, Jesus. because Jesus says, I am the truth. The truth and the life. Yeah. So it's not like, Lord, give me truth. It's like, Lord, I give me truth. It's like, give me you. <laughs> give me you. I want you. And so many people say, God, give me strength. He's like, what do you mean? I am strength. I am strength. Yeah. Give me truth. Give me comfort. Give me peace. Give me he's like I am all those. I'm all I that. am that I am. I am yeah, all those. I am that yes. I am. Yes. So a lot of times we ask God, we ask Jesus for the things that he is. It's like asking for parts of him. And he's like, what do you mean? It's like, he's like, what do you mean? If I am all those things and if I am in you and if you abide in me and I abide in you, then yeah, then you are those things. Yes. Yeah, like God, give me safety. No. You are my safety. Yes. You are my rock. You are my fortress. You are my protector. You are my king. Yeah. You are my God. You got to stand those and know that you are those things if he, if you abide in, 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 in each other, you know, that you are those, you know, it's like, I, Lord, I am that. That's, that's who I yeah. am. And I think sometimes we don't, I don't, I think we all forget we do that he is all those so it's like sometimes we ask for above and beyond mm -hmm. instead of saying lord just be with me because if he were literally with you do you realize if jesus is in a boat with you that boat is not going to sink it is impossible because he is in the boat with you so if we see that in scripture why can't we believe that he's in the boat in our situation yeah and if he's in the boat in our situation then nothing's going to happen because he is there and he's the protector and he's the provider, you know? And it's like, and see, we might get it twisted and wrong because let's say they do shut the church down. We're like, oh God, where were you? And he's like, what makes you think I was in the building? Mm. I was in you. Are you still preaching? Yeah. Then why do you care about four walls? Mm. So we got to put the perspective right because if we don't have a perspective, a perspective right, then we think God fails us. And it's not that he failed us. It's we had our eyes on the wrong thing. Yeah. We listen to the wrong things. We have our eyes on the wrong things. We 
We only listen to what we want to listen to. Yeah, you know. So let's say, let's say um, every church in I get, I pray not, but let's say every church in Modesto shut down because of what the governor said. We stay open, and a thousand people get saved on Sunday. Praise God. Or let's say the city comes and shuts us down, so we go preach on the streets, and a thousand people still get saved. It's <laughs> Yeah. You see, God still got his way. Yeah. God's like, I'll do it with a building. I'll do it without a building. I'll do it in the front yard, in the backyard. I'll have you preach on a tree. It doesn't matter. I'll see you have you sitting up there like a woody woodpecker, and you will still preach, and people will still get saved. I just pictured you like a woody woodpecker. With the long hair? Like that? Like Tarzan, actually. <laughs> oh, my God. That's what he used to do. I know. Oh, wow. So, all right, guys. Um, I just wanted to share this thing with you, and then you, you found it. And you're like, oh, let's talk about this. I'm like, heck yeah. Yeah. You know, um, but I want to real quick, the very first sentence, just to kind of go full circle. It says, my dear friends, don't believe everything you hear. That pertains to your news. I don't care if it's CNN or Fox or your Facebook or YouTube. Don't believe everything you hear carefully weigh and examine what people tell you. And not everyone who talks about God comes from God. That can be anything, anybody, just in general. It says, and it says, there are a lot of lying preachers loose. It should say in Facebook, but it says in the world. A lot of lying preachers. Whether they have credentials or not, there's a lot of lying preachers. If scripture said it, that means they're out there. Yeah. And we have to be able to test that. How do you test that? How do you test it? I'll, I'll give you a first indication is their walk. What's their testimony like? What's their walk like? Because you, you, you can't do your own thing. And, and, and see, here's the thing. Following Christ and, 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 and being a prophet or a preacher or a teacher is not about doing your own thing, whatever you feel like doing. It's about doing what the word of God says. And sometimes this Bible is going to say things that you don't want to do, but that's where you got to make the choice. Because if you do your own thing, you are a false teacher and a false prophet. I don't care how good you make it sound. But here's the thing. This is, our, this is what we go by. Because if we don't have this, is the line on the road. You know? Well, I think what, what happens is that the problem is, is at the moment that, you know, that gets brought up, they start thinking that it's, we're being judgmental and all of that. But the thing is, is that it's the word of God. Yeah. So are you saying that the word of God is being judgmental? Well, unfortunately, the, with the serpent, it's, it's the word of God. Unfortunately, the serpent knows the Bible more than most Christians, but he will use it and twist it and manipulate it. That's why you have to have the spirit of God living in you, man. Mm -hmm. I'm a true believer that if you are really, truly seeking God, you're going to find him and your heart's going to tell you what's right and what's wrong. Yeah. But we choose to ignore certain things because maybe we like it. But you know deep inside. Yeah. So, all right, guys. God bless you. Uh, we'll see you for Bible study at 7 o'clock. Remember, Sunday service is now at 9 o'clock. We're going to send the reminders out on text and email. Um, that way you still get those and um, but that's about it guys so thank you so much thanks um, and that's it man we love you guys you. we love you guys all Have right a beautiful day bye bye